We now go into the second phase of the question and answer. Dr. Shochet, you will have one minute to phrase a question. Uh, Dr. Brown, you will have three minutes to answer that question. Dr. Shochet. I'll try to make it very brief and very short. I want to ask Dr. Brown one single question. How does he differentiate between his belief in Jesus and the New Testament and the belief of a Muslim in Muhammad and the Quran, a Buddhist in the, in the Theravada or Mahayana writings, a Hindu's belief, and all the other religions in the world, what they believe? How does Christianity, in so far that it has moved away, added, whatever you want to call it, from the Jewish Bible, how does Christianity differ in terms of an act of faith in these things? Christianity or following Jesus as the Jewish Messiah differs in many, many ways from the Hindu faith and the Muslim faith and atheistic views, etc. Number one, Jesus came as a Torah observant Jew. Uh, Muhammad did not, Buddha did not, Confucius did not, Krishna, Krishna did not, etc. Number two, only in the gospel message is there an antidote to sin found. In other words, the issue of atonement where do we have our sins atoned for? How can we come into right relationship with God and sin is dealt with and yet we are changed? That's not dealt with in any of these other religions. Not only that, I do base my faith on the authority of the Hebrew Scriptures. I know Jewish people that came to believe in Jesus, including rabbis. As they read the Hebrew Bible, they became convinced he is the one spoken of. So. You can't prove Muhammad from the Hebrew Bible, you can't prove Krishna, you can't prove Confucius, you can't prove any of the others, yet everything that Jesus did, the New Testament writers, the interpretation, all of it is thoroughly Jewish, all of it is in harmony with the Hebrew Scriptures. In addition to that, I have seen the fruit of what is called the New Covenant in the lives of former Hindus and former Muslims and former Confucianists and former Buddhists, etc., who have testified almost universally that in spite of their zeal, in spite of their work and their effort to somehow come into right relationship with God, to receive a new heart, to receive forgiveness of sins and a changed life, they were unable in all of these different ways. I've also heard that from rabbinic Jews, who then, through faith in Jesus the Messiah, have been gloriously, wonderfully transformed around the world. One last thing just of interest, and, and Don Richardson in his book, Eternity in Their Hearts, has documented this around the world. For example, the Karen people in the 1800s, 1812 actually in Burma, missionaries came to them. They seemed very dense. They seemed to have no concept of God whatsoever. They had Buddhist background and animistic background. Missionaries talked to them. There was no fruit until one day they realized, wait a second, you were talking about this God, Yuwa, Yahweh, Jehovah, the, the name by which he was called or, or the way it was expressed by the missionaries. They said, we have a tradition dating back centuries and centuries and centuries that someone would come to us with a book telling us about the one true God. And when they realized that, although for years they resisted the words of the missionaries, the Boardmans, George and Sarah Boardman, suddenly tens of thousands of them were converted and were baptized. This type of thing has happened around the world. In other words, God is supernaturally backing up this message and through this message the light of the one true God is going around the world, distinguishing it in fact from all other religions and all other faiths. Dr. Shochet, your two minute rebuttal, sir. Again, I'm amazed. I, I really don't understand this. Atonement, first of all, the Muslims preach exactly the same type of atonement. Only those who will acknowledge that Allah is Allah and Muhammad is his final prophet shall be saved, and all others, it's down to the barbecue. Um, as for Buddha and Krishna, as a matter of fact, they are less arrogant and less presumptuous than either Buddha, than either Muhammad or Jesus. They never made such claims, at least in most of the Hindu and Buddhist traditions. They are dividing in a whole bunch of different religions, and they have an argument of something of all rivers lead to the same ocean. So to say that the only one who offers that, no, any religion that claims to be universal claims that they are the ones who offer uh, the atonement. It's likewise that the Mohammedans, the Muslims, uh, claim that they are the fulfillment of the Old Testament. The Christians, Jesus and the apostles came and said, God gave the Torah, first edition. Then came a revised edition called the New Testament, and that's it. Then came the Muslims and said, nonsense. God came as a second edition, they accept Jesus, but then God came as a third edition, and the third edition is the final edition. Then, of course, comes Joseph Smith in the Book of the Mormons. Then, of course, you have all the others, etc., etc. Uh, where is it going to end? Yes, the Christians came as the book to all the natives and so forth. They came as the book in one hand and the cross in the other. 
And they said, you better kiss this or this kisses you. And that's how they became converted. And as for conversion, the Muslims converted just as many. As a matter of fact, the Muslim religion is the largest growing religion in the world, and there are at least as many uh, as Muslims as there are Christians, especially if you don't even accept most Christians as being true Christians. Uh, as for the fruits of the beliefs in Jesus, look at the fruits. I know plenty of people who have been saved and taken out of the gutter from drugs and promiscuity by joining the Munis, by joining Scientology, by joining Hare Krishna, by joining every cult that you can imagine. If you really believe in something, it will fix you up. Whether you believe in idolatry, you believe in nonsense, or you believe in yourself, it makes no difference. So therefore, I'm not impressed by the fruits of Jesus or Christianity. Dr. Brown? Well, I didn't expect to amaze you, but I'm pleased that I've been amazing Good. you tonight. <laughs> Is there the same kind of atonement in Islam? Absolutely not. I had the pleasure of studying Arabic and studying the Quran in Arabic. No, it does not offer atonement for sin through the shedding of blood. Islam claims to be the fulfillment of Hebrew Bible and New Covenant. It's true, except the Bible of the Quran is not the same Bible. It's greatly changed. The New Testament is greatly changed. The claim in the Quran is that the Jews and Christians corrupted the original text and they alone have the true one. Whereas what I'm talking about is getting the actual Hebrew Bible in translation or in the original Hebrew to people around the world who then worship the God of Israel. Uh, and in fact, there's one interesting thing Hebrew scriptures plus something called rabbinic literature. Instead of one book, it's volume after volume after volume after volume. That doesn't leave the Hebrew Bible alone. It says you need our tradition too. Conversion through book and cross, no, no, no. There were aberrations, so-called Christians who persecuted. That is the exception to the universal rule around the world. Thank you, Dr. Brown. That's a very... How many questions do uh, I have? Uh, that was his one-minute rebuttal. The, I, the, I, the closing statements, are, or the uh, questions are finished. We're going to oh, closing oh, sorry, statements. Yeah, yeah.